I haven't had any since Mrs. Leslie. And I've just cleaned out the dark room. Actually, I've just cleaned up both dark rooms to make them how they should be. It's extremely important that you keep everything clean, that you put everything away where it belongs, so it's ready for the next time. I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit more and show you some things that can happen um, with our equipment. But this equipment is expensive. It's hard to get. We have to order it. It takes a long time to get it. And you have to be good stewards of what we're fortunate enough to have. So um, I'm going to show you how the dark room is supposed to look and how I expect it to look every day when you leave class. Without fail, it has to look like this, okay? All right, otherwise your, your pictures are not going to come out well and you'll be dissatisfied with your results. And I don't want that to happen to you. So first of all, take a look at this cabinet up here. And you can see that I've gone and I've collected all of the, the uh, developing tanks and reels and spools and everything else and I put them in the cabinet where they belong, how they belong. The tanks go on the top shelf upside down. There should be paper towels in the room but I can't get up there because my leg is broken. But there should be clean paper towels underneath those to catch the water. There's the baffles on the left. There's the red tops and there should be a huge pile of those and they're not there. Where they are is up by the sink in the other dark room, and other people are using them for paint trays and stuff like that, and that is absolutely wrong. So they need to be cleaned and put back here. Um, and then there's the spools here that your reels go on, and then here's the film reels. It needs to be put away like this, clean and ready for the next time, okay? All right, so in order to develop your film, that's what we're going to talk about today, and to get good results, these are the things that you need to do. You need to get a tank. You need to get a spool, you need to get a baffle, and a, and a red lid, and then you need your film reel, your roll of exposed film, and you need to work with a partner. There should be two rolls of film developed at the same time in order to uh, make sure we make the best use of our chemicals. Chemicals are expensive and we don't want to waste any. So if you don't have a partner uh, to develop your film, you, you need to find one. Okay, so then you need to go into this drawer right here and find a pair of scissors and a bottle opener. Okay, this is how you're going to get your film open. Take a look at this film here. This is just a demonstration roll that I have and it's and I'm just going to show you how to do this in the light. Some of you have already done this, but I want to make sure that you've got all of the uh, steps right so that you get the best results. So what you have to do is you're in the pitch black. No lights on. It says in this thing, turn off the vestibule, vestibule and room lights and make sure both doors are closed. So it has to be pitch black in here. Don't bring your cell phones in here. Uh, make sure that there, there's no chance of any light because as soon as you open this, your film is vulnerable to being exposed and ruined by any kind of light. You cannot do this in the amber lights in the other dark room. That will ruin your film. It has to be in this small dark room. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to feel your film and find the end that doesn't have the spool sticking out and use the can opener to peel off this ring. And then you want to push the film out and don't let it unwind, okay? It's because if it unwinds, you've got a problem. So don't let it unwind. You've got six inches or so of leader that it's okay to touch, but the rest of it you're not going to touch. You see this part right here? This is called the leader, and you have to get rid of that. So I hold it in my hands like this, and I take the scissors, and I put the scissors against the ends of my fingers, and I cut the leader off. So now it's straight. Then I have to take this film and put it in my other hand, and I'm going to bend it a little bit with my fingers. Now before I shut off the lights, I looked for these two triangles on my, on my uh, reel, because that's real important, that's where the film goes in. And it has little ball bearings inside these here that advance your film. So I've got to take this film and I have to put it underneath these two triangles. And of course I have to do this in the dark, so you have to practice this with some some fake film a little bit and um, so you can do it with your eyes shut. So I've pulled it like, past those ball bearings. I'm going to hold on to that film and I'm going to put my thumbs right on those triangles so it doesn't jump out. And then I'm going to 
course, this one doesn't want to work. I'm going to do this uh, until it ro rolls the film up. And I'm not sure why this one's not working. Okay, I found another reel that's working fine. The reason why this first one wasn't working is it didn't have two ball bearings. So you need to check and make sure that there's a ball bearing on each side, and then that will advance your film properly. So we're going to retire this one because it's not working right. Um, so I'm going to thread the film in here, and I'm going to pull it past those ball bearings, put my thumbs on the triangles, and start to wind it up. And it's a self-winding, so it's going to wind that film up. All the way till I get to the end. When I get to the end, then I have to cut this this spool off. Because if I don't, it's not going to fit in the tank, right? Okay, pause. When you get to the end of the film and you cut off that um, little spool that's inside there, you're going to have a piece of film that's loose like this. You have to wind that all the way on. Otherwise, it's going to touch the film underneath and ruin the pictures that are on there. So make sure that you've got it wound all the way on. And then you're going to put it on the spool. You're going to take your partner's film and put that on the spool. And you're going to drop them into the tank. After that, you take this baffle. So the light baffle, so it makes it light tight. Put it on till it's can feel it stop. Don't crank it really hard. You won't be able to get it off. Now it's light safe and you can turn on the lights. Okay, so take these things, put them away, and you're going to get your chemicals. I just throw everything away and, and make sure that I'm working in a clean place. So I want to get my best results. Okay, so you need to get the developer cup, only the developer, and you're going to go under this cabinet here and get our film developer. Now this film developer is light sensitive. You have to keep it in the back of the cabinet all the time. It's in a dark um, container because it's light sensitive. You need to feel in here and, or, and find one that is partially empty. Don't open a new one until it's empty, because if you leave it partially full, um, the oxygen will ruin it, and then we have to throw it away. Um, it won't happen right away, but if it's orange, you can't use it. If it's yellow, you can use it, but you have to use it for an extra minute. Okay, so you're going to take your chemical and your developer, and you're going to pour 16 ounces in here. And the 16 ounces is this top two cup measure cup. So you're going to pour it in. In here. And you can see that fresh, fresh developer is pretty clear. Now I'm going to close this immediately, and I'm going to put it back in the dark because it's light sensitive and I don't want to ruin it. Okay, so now I've got my film in the canister and my partner's film. This is light tight because the lid is on, and I'm ready to pour in the developer. I've measured out 16 ounces of developer at the two cup level, and I'm just going to pour it in. When you pour this in, there's a really good chance that there's air bubbles on your film, so you have to take your can and tap it a couple times to uh, release the air bubbles. Put the lid on and grab a couple paper towels. And then you start your timing right away and you start agitating. This is agitating, it's a little figure eight, it's very gentle, and what this does is keeps fresh chemicals going on the film. So you're gonna do this for the first 30 seconds, and then you're gonna do it 10 seconds of every minute for 15 minutes. When you get to 14 and a half minutes, then you're going to start agitating for the last 30 seconds. So agitate 30 seconds, stop, let it sit, in the last 10 seconds of that minute, pick it up, agitate.
agitate for another 10 seconds. And you can do this out in the classroom. Um, and look at the clock if you don't have a cell phone timer. But it's very gentle. You don't want to make air bubbles, but you want the chemicals to slosh all over the film. And then I set it down until the next minute. When you get to the last 30 seconds, I'm going to agitate again for that last 30 seconds. And when that time is done, you take the red lid off and you dump the developer down the drain. You can't use it again. So you dump the developer down the drain. Then you turn on the water and you wash it for five minutes. Make sure the water goes right down inside. And I take this red cap and I stick it under the tank to hold it so the water goes down the side. And this tank is made for the water to go down around the film and come up. And it's going to come out these holes when it gets filled. It comes. So I just want to make sure the stream of water is going down the hole so that the, the water is washing the entire film. And you run it for five minutes. You don't want hot water and you don't want really cold water. So it should be water that when you feel it, it doesn't feel hot or cold. That's called tepid water. If it's hot water, you'll, you'll damage your film. And if it's really cold, that's not good for it either. So it needs to be about 68 degrees, which is room temperature. Five minutes of wash. Okay, so. Our five minutes are up. Now remember, you can develop, or you can rinse your film in here if nobody's developing or loading film. You can rinse your film in here and it's already the right temperature. It actually it's a little bit warm, but, um, or, you can, or you can rinse it in the sink out in the dark room. Now what happens if there's more than one person with a tank and you need to rinse at the same time? What you do is you fill your tank, do a little agitating, while they fill their tank, dump it out, refill, and dump. So you take turns, filling it up, dumping it out, filling it up, dumping it out. So when you're when you're doing a little agitating of the water and dumping yours out, the other person is filling their tank up. So you take turns. It's possible for two people to use the sink at the same time. Okay, so after your five minutes is up, then you're done with the wash. You cannot open this yet because we have to fix it. Fix it me, fixer makes film and paper uh, light safe. So if I open this up right now, it would ruin all the pictures, the light in here. So it would ruin all the pictures. I don't want to do that. I'm going to get this cup, and it looks pretty gnarly because it's got fixer crystals in it, but it's still okay. And I'm going to find a fixer bottle that is partially used. And these are all full, and I'm not going to I'm not going to um, use a completely full one unless there aren't any that are partially used. But the same thing, I'm going to use 16 ounces of fixer. So the fixer should be clear. I'm going to pour 16 ounces, which is right here. So 16 ounces, two cups, one pint. See the measurement is the same amount of fixer as, the, as you did for the developer. Okay, so now I'm going to take this fixer and I'm going to pour it in just like I did the developer, exactly the same way. And I'm going to release the air bubbles from the film by giving it a little tap. So I've got it in there, tap it on the counter, I've got to put the red lid back on put my paper towels on here because I don't want to get anything on me and I'm going to agitate just like I did with the developer. So you're going to use the fixer for 15 minutes. Start it out with 30 seconds of agitation. When you're done with 30 seconds, you put it down, watch the time, you get to the last 10 seconds of that minute, you're going to agitate for 10 seconds. And then this is, the, I'm not doing it for a full 10 seconds because otherwise this video would be way too long. And then I'm going to put it down. And every minute I'm going to agitate for 10 seconds. When I get to 14 and a half minutes, I pick it up and I agitate for 30 seconds. Now you're working with a partner, so it's a good idea that one person does the agitating and the timing uh, for the developer, and the other person does the agitating and, 
and timing for the fixer. So you work together. One person times, the other person agitates. And one person agitates for a developer, the other for fixer. Now, when I'm done with fixer, I don't pour this down the drain. The fixer we use again to fix our filler. So the fixer, we open up our canister and we pour it into this into this uh, container here. Okay, so when the last of our fixer is in here, I'm going to put the lid back on the container. These we like to just keep out of the way. And the film should be light safe. Now, to get these open, if you haven't tightened it too much, hold the top and the bottom and it should open up pretty easily. If you've tightened it too much and you just can't get it, don't hold it here, you'll never get it. Hold it on each end. If it's too uh, tight, then run it under a little bit of water to help to get it. So now I can pull out my rolls. And this I didn't put a roll of film on, but here's my roll of film. And I can uh, take, take it. Oh, shoot. I did this wrong. Before I take this out, I need to put two drops of LFN. It's up here. It's almost gone, and I don't know how to get any more. So once this is gone, it's gone. You, there's another thing that we have that you can use. But this takes the air bubbles. I mean, the water bubbles off. So you're going to take two drops, and that's all it takes. It's a soapy solution. And so you can put one, two drops of LFN, put the cap on, and put it back in, in here. So I should have done that before I put the lid off. So then, after I put the LFN in, I fill it up with water, and it's going to look soapy. Because it is a, it's a wetting agent. It keeps the... Uh, hard water that we have from making um, marks on our film. It's not perfect, but... And I'm just going to agitate this around a little bit, and then I can uh, pour it out. Now I can take, take the film out. Now if we run out of LFN, we have another chemical here. It's called Photo Flow Solution. And um, what you could do is take your um, film. Oh, this hasn't been open in a long time. Uh, you can take your film. We'll pretend I've got this open. And this is the photo flow solution. You can take your roll of film and just do it up and down in the photo flow solution and let it drip. And that also will keep it from making bubbles on your film. So photo flow solution, use the other one first and we keep it right here. Okay, so now these things, I don't just leave them when I'm done with them. I'm going to take care of them so they're ready for the next time somebody needs them. I don't like messes, you'll find that out. Okay, now my film is ready to take out. I'm going to take it out this way really very carefully. You don't want to bend it too much. If you bend it too much, you'll get little ha little white moon marks on it. And then once I've got it loosened, then I can pull it out. This is a 36 exposure roll. I take my fingers like this, just barely lightly, squeeze you off the water. Once, maybe twice. Now this roll of film is black because whoever took these pictures overexposed the film. But what I'm going to do is take this I'm going to hang it up on the film drying rack so we can reach it. And I put a clip on the bottom so it won't stick to the wall. It has to dry overnight. Do not use the film dryer in this room. It doesn't work right. It doesn't close. It's broken. Don't use it. I came in here and it was on a long weekend. Shouldn't have been. Don't use it. It's broken. So just let your film air dry here, like this. And then the next day, you can get it, and you're going to cut it into strips and put it in a negative sleeve. You'll have to ask the teacher for a negative sleeve. So the, uh, your assignment this week in your textbook 
is the pages about processing film. And um, so you should read those and do the corresponding pages in your handbook. And also in your handbook, there's probably um, a page that will show you exactly you can take notes and write, and I'm sorry, I don't have the page memorized, but you can take notes from this video. And that's it for processing film. Good luck. One last task. It's a PS. Remember, I've got all this equipment that I use, and I've got to take care of it. So, it's clean because I did all the washing and because we used the photo floor, the LFN solution. So it's clean, I'm gonna take the tank, get the water out of it, put it upside down so it can drain. The spool goes here, the film. Reels, I gotta retire the one that doesn't have two ball bearings. The baffle goes up here, so you can stack them up, and the red lids go here. So I wanna show you one thing outside the other classroom about the red lids. Okay, here's a PS to our PS. All these things are left out in the sink. And the other art classes, those students don't know what these are for. These lids were used for paint. Look, it's full of paint. That's terrible. You don't want that on your film. You really don't, or it'll ruin all your pictures. So you gotta make sure that you do not leave these out here. Or people who don't know what they're for are gonna use them for paint and then you've got a bad situation. Okay, so very clean. Everything's put back where it belongs, so it's ready for the next time. All right, hopefully I'll see you all soon.